Yo, what is up folks, Shotsu G here with Grixis Phoenix in uh, Explorer, the Pioneer equivalent format on Arena. This deck's basically exactly the same as it would be uh, in paper now anyway. And we're playing Phoenix, but in blue-black. Uh, obviously we're still playing Red Sources, Cast of the Phoenix, but we are largely a blue-black deck. We get some pretty awesome cards that we can use. Um, so we'll just kind of get onto it. I guess the first point we should talk about is Shieldred. Uh, obviously, we're playing a bunch of cantrips in our deck. We've got Sleight of Hand, we've got Opt, we've got Consider, we've got Treasure Cruise up here. Shieldred, absolutely excellent with these. It gives us an alternative angle of attack versus our opponent's stuff. Also, some handy life gain versus aggro, which can be a bit of a problem. We've got, of course, our four Phoenixes, and then we also have four copies of Ledger Shredder as our kind of last threat. We do have four copies of Pretty Little Prankster, which is a huge addition to the deck from Wilds. It's an enabler rather than something you're casting as a creature side. Going through the other black cards, let's start at one. So we have our considers, we have our ops, we have our sleight of hands, a mix of clan trips here. We've got four copies of Thoughtseize. Does double duty in this deck. Sure, we can target our opponent, take their important cards. We can also use it to get Phoenix in our graveyard in a pinch. Uh, and then four copies of Fatal Push. This is a nice little upgrade in that we have like very clean removal versus early creatures here with a Fatal Push. The other big upgrade removal wise is Bitter Triumph. One on a black is additional cost to cast a spell, discard a card or pay three life, which is an upside, and it fixes the graveyard as much as it's a downside, but destroy target creature or planeswalkers means we already have a really clean answer for the larger creatures and planeswalkers as well. Super solid, super solid. I mentioned Pick Up Prankster, it's another enabler for the deck. Obviously, we've got the Candrips here, we're going to try to get the Phoenix into the graveyard, and we're also enabling Treasure Crews. Pick Up Prankster does kind of all these things for us with the Free the Fae instant adventure. One in a blue, instant, mill four cards, then put an instant sorcery or fairy card from among the mill cards into your hand. Um, so it can find you, like, dump cards as a graveyard will get you treasure crews, can dump phoenixes, can find more copies of itself, kind of like, hey, it's a nice thing to do on turn two, getting you ahead to where you want to be, while also being like, hey, replacing itself, making sure that you're still going to have enough cheap spells to bring back phoenix on time. Uh, Elijah Shredder, obviously a great threat in the format. We've got a bunch of cheap spells, easy to trigger here. And then one Dwarry Disruption, also at two. Keeping a land count at like a reasonable point where like, hey, we get to play a large number of spells and sometimes you just get to get them on turn two. It is really, really good. Phoenixes, Shieldred, and of course, four copies of Treasure Cruise. This kind of blue-back version of the deck kind of has come to prominence um, over the last like few months. I think definitely some of these regional championships became pretty popular and it's a bit of a split. You still see both versions of the deck, both is it, is it and like the kind of blue-black Grixis version we see here um, doing very, very well. Um, but in particular, on Arena, I would trend towards the Grixis version at this point, because we're actually missing Temporal Trespass um, from the Is It version, which is like a huge boon to that version of the deck, whereas this version of the deck is actually totally complete. You get to play all the black cards, especially Old Dread. The mana base is like fairly hand, like fairly straightforward. We have a whole of the Storm Giants, we have an Awara for utility lands, obviously drawing a bunch of cards, so getting to activate this isn't that unreasonable. A single island is our only basic, and then four Dark Six Shores, four Clearwater Pathway, two copies of Shitwright Marsh. Four copies of Water Grave and then two Steam Vents, which of course we can try and like dig towards and find with our large number of cantrips and library manipulation um, to help us cast Phoenix in a really tricky spot. Very solid. I'm going to be playing some best of three ranks, and so I also have a sideboard here. Let's run through this. So one could be Raven Feeblement, Kills Grease Fang, or good, like the Spirit Stacks, Mono White, super, super solid. One copy of Go for Throat, where you need some extra hard removal. Um, there is one copy, actually two copies of Reckon of Backmaster here, alongside two copies of Miser's Tice. That's obviously great um, graveyard hate, and Backmaster just being a nice threat that you can play early versus some of the slower controlling decks, but you're going to have to grind for the long game. Dispute versus blue decks, and then we have some alternate threats here with Sahili Sublime Artisan. Um, again, versus like control decks, that kind of thing, being able to just get this into play, and something you can just jam um, without having to like amass a large number of instant sorceries to kind of do your game plan. Um, very, very solid, and then can crew value over the course of the game while you play out kind of more removal style, being becoming more of a control deck, or just holding a bunch of counter spells. We've got Mystical Dispute here, which I mentioned, versus Blue decks, and we also have two Disdainful Strokes versus Ramp, or something like Alien Mask Incarnation, where like countering big spells is important. The last thing, and the true enemy in the format at the minute, I guess, is the Malia combo, um, and this also hits Angels, but Knight of Dust Shadow is a nice one. Three copies here, really, really want to beat up on it, but one in a black, T2 of Menace, but has the most important cause, your opponents can't gain life. Shuts down a Malia combo, and also shuts down Angels as well, which I'm super happy with, and uh, yeah, it's a nice inclusion here. And the other thing is that in a deck where we have so many cantrips and ways to kind of like go through our deck, it's fairly easy to just be able to find when you're playing a post-board games. So yeah, I'm gonna take this into some best of three ranked. If you're not already, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd really, really appreciate it, and let's go.
All right, first match. Yeah, apologies my voice is a little, like, yeah, so a bit under the weather. I'm also meant to be moving this weekend, so that's why I've been a little slow at uploading. But hopefully should be all in, all set up for once Carla comes out. Looks good to me. Got Shredder, we've got Pranks to kind of set us up. Go Dread 2, I'm just going to leave with a tap water grave. Green. Hydra Mystic. You should kill this, probably more important than... Mm. Well, always like, hey, do you want to kill the... I'm just going to get this out of here. If you're a one mana spell, we can one mana spell I'll show the next turn. If not, we can just... Prankster. It's like not unreasonable to just slam Legendary here, I feel like. At least. It's actually elves, yeah, I feel better. Obviously he needs an answer for this. I might main phase this, is that crazy? I don't think so. If we find a fatal push, we absolutely want to cast it now. Alright, so we hit a Phoenix. We currently don't have any woman of spells. Uh, I think we want to consider because we have drawn into the treasure cruise. Grab this. Given that as well. Cool. The woman is a Phoenix. I'm just gonna show this now. At least with the Leafy Hand Regenerator on two, it means they're not a very like a super fast elf start. But um kind of given that we only showed Fatal Push, they probably are playing like as if we're more of a control. Well, obviously now we've shown Phoenix. But previously setting up visionary to be able to start drawing cards is will set you very well up against something like blue black control. Or like Esper. Consider it is though. We can't give them too much time. We kinda of do need to find some answers. Um, yeah, they come back here. I'm gonna end up casting this consider on Arton, I think. Try and find something relevant. Oh. If not, I'm fairly okay just slamming shoulder. I thought he's happy to bend this. Kind of here. Okay, Arton isn't bad. We've prankster opt. I mean, we can bring Phoenix. Um, just in case how much time. So they've got one, two, three, five, five, maybe six mana next turn. I think we lead Prankster and see if we find a real spell. And if not, we can Treasure Cruise and see what we hit. And we've got the op to bring back Phoenix to the stuff. Right, so it there. Um, Triumph would be pretty good. This if let's stick a little bit further. I'd rather have the removal spell for the next turn. Yeah, sure. This kind of works, but like, not all in on nothing per se. We're gonna. I'll leave it. I'll push my yard. All right, cool. We find a fatal push. I am gonna snipe off the, the visionary. It's the Lord. It's things gonna draw them cards. That makes sense. We do get our one Phoenix back. I need some removal for next turn. They have five mana here. Uh, they've got Collect Company. They've got Quarter Call there. But I think we're okay. I think we're immediately dead. We kind of set ourselves up pretty well. We've got a double bit of triumph plus a fatal push. We could interact with some of the creatures. Um. In case of them not hitting like the nuts, this is totally fine. Leaf Cavalry's, while good, um, aren't going to actually kill us very quickly. All right, we do want to kill them though. I'm gonna lead with Ledger Shredder, I think. Um, uh, go ahead and push one of these. One of these can go in the yard. Not hitting a, a land is a little unfortunate, but I think that's fine. Six. Pop the stuff. Ideally, we have a land to kill these, but... We carry on over the top. Yeah, we're not dying super quickly. We can block the Shredder. This is also going to loot on their turn. A decent amount. One, two, three, four, five. 
We've got our own opt as well, we can cruise. In case of how we want to use these bit of tramps. Okay, Marlin's slow, but it's like a reasonable threat and provides a lot of mana. It's like really good at powering up Warmaster if they hit into one of those. But the time being, they're kind of playing it slow, just trying drawing cards. Oh, they're playing Glowing White, it's interesting. Alright, let's resolve this trigger. Didn't hit a removal spell. Um, okay, I'm just discarding one of the arts here. This guy's having to get rid of Shell Dread, but... A bit sketchy. Let's see what they find here as well. I don't care if they're playing any other run conditions. Okay, they're greeny in on this stuff. There's any transforms. I can have a ton of mana. Um, don't want a Legend Shredder. Another bit of Triumph. So I have a bunch of mana regardless. I'm trying to work out if I want to do anything other than just cast some bit of Triumphs. Uh, I think I'm fine ditching Shieldred to one of these. And then... Basically, do I want to triumph into like cruise here, try and hit a land, like a chief and trap spell? String seven. You can just leave cruise. See what we draw. Sure. Deal. All right. Let's run with that then. Gives us the most options. I actually didn't think we had seven. All right, we have untapped land as well. I'm gonna play this on black. And yeah, the plan will just be to cast some bit of primes then. I'll discard a card here. We'll target the Marwin. Uh, I pitch the steam vents. We might end up using the shield dread for lethal. Uh. But yeah, we've got a reasonable amount of damage here. Like, sandbagging's a bit of triumphs, but it's fine. We have a way to go, like, list of haste. That's totally fine, okay. And this is lethal over two turns. So we shouldn't really need it, but we'll be able to play two bit of triumphs over our next turn cycle. Well, I guess it's this is the window. There are a couple of reach creatures I could grab. I think we're fairly safe. There's no actual creative in the format. Some kind of similar things. We shouldn't be able to die straight away from this position, I don't think. Three. And. Do that. It's not impossible, but. Rehenge. And. I'll just stop. This isn't some life. Um, in fact, this isn't actually quite right. weird. It's not weird, but... Well, so if we go... Hmm, let's see we draw. But... Maybe the right to keep children one of these? Yeah. Not reach. Alright, alright. This game won. Okay. Versus elves. I think we want the definitely want to go for the throat. I think I think I want the random movement. Most most one kills so many of that creatures still. Um unless they've got two lords in play, it's doing pretty good work. Uh, I'm obviously not fussed about these, any of these. I'm only trimming it a little bit. I think it's well kind of like longer game cards. It's almost like a match where the shoulders aren't like fantastic. I thought the scissors are fine, but not like stellar either. Um, I want to keep the disruption because it's like land. I think my extra spot removal for as well. Versus. They're also, the way that X-Tab is a bit more aggressive with Silly Champions. I think maybe we need to see how that works out. There's also a reason why Raven Feedment's not that good though. Uh, having enough, like, uh, if we hit like our one mana removal spells, then we're in a really, really good shape. 
Yeah, okay. I think I want to learn to play this. I want to need the shoulder instead. The shoulder is also good versus like the the champion draws. Fine. Not that it's blocking, but the life gain versus them trying to actually aggro us out is super relevant. We can maybe just slam shoulder on turn four. So we need to have interact enough early to not just be dying. All right, we have the arena now. I'm gonna keep this. Doesn't have like tons going on, but we've got two gan trips. We've got the rainbow achievement for the turn one elf. Feel pretty decent about it. We have the pranks to the turn two now, which kind of solidifies this a lot. Get that elf out of here. Warmaster kind of deserves an answer. I. This is probably the most threatening card in the deck. It makes creatures then threaten to overrun. I think we want to kill it on site, especially if it's what they're doing on turn two. Um, 15. Disruption doing anything. Maybe we can stack a company with it, so I'm going to keep it for now. I don't think I'm really looking at discarding. But we need critical mass of spells, otherwise, we don't want to discard any of the cantrips. We still need to be able to cast three spells, bring back Phoenix, etc. Realm Walk is really good. But it's also kind of playing into all it's it's also very slow. Whereas this lets them start beating down and making tokens. And I hold up disruption here. Um yeah, I'm gonna shock. We're gonna go to 13, which is kinda low. But I wanna be able to cast either prankster in a cantrip or disrupt something in a cantrip. We'll see. This is kind of hedging them towards like towards like company and stuff, but in for tea. Got in the red zone. Be a little careful with these, but here I feel kind of okay. We might get Shaman the Pact out, but also there's limited space in the Elf deck. They've shown like growing rights, these things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and disruption this. Use it while we can. And we'll go ahead and keep it here. Um, we should draw this really. We just kill the girl. We just kill the Uh, oh, I say that immediately. Draw. I just read it. Give them a turn with it. I think this is I'm just killing it outright. We'll go ahead and use a slight hand now. Play this. The crazy got four cards for it. I'm gonna put an ops in the bin. Um and uh yeah, it's like a bit of triumph. I mean the way we lose is just not being able to kill their creatures. Like casting spells is good. You want treasure cruise coming too? Yeah, okay. Let's make this tap. All right. This also, I guess, holds off their own walker. But hey, okay. we'll see. If they have land company, I'll be very sad. But also, it's not really a thing we can have to play around. Okay, Warmaster. The realm walker on elf lets them play um, elves on top of their library. They haven't done yet. This is a leaf crown gem. This combo, two card combo, visionary and realm walker, is super powerful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and discard this. Realm Walker looks like the top card of your library. This lets you draw cards. So if you cast a spell from the top of your library, or cast a spell from your hand, if the top card of your library is an elf you can cast, you can go, okay, cool, I don't need to draw a card. You can just cast it. But if it isn't an elf card, you just draw it and then you can start carrying on. Unless you, you basically have to see before you pay here. It's super, super good. Uh, they don't have a ton of mana, so just jamming shoulder actually feels like kind of okay. But we should, bit of, we should probably get rid of it. Master. They've got next boss as well. Um, Ruse first, see what's up. If we had a land, we can go uh, Shield Drag Cruise. Not right, sure. Why on earth did you tap Black Mana? What? Makes sense. Repay here. Gonna push the Warmaster. Uh, second trade cruise. This does let us start setting up for. I want to shield red. Um, and then cruise next turn. I'm gonna ditch this. Go ahead and attack here. I'm just trying to work out if I want to kill the visionary of the round walker. We are actually in danger with the. Uh, um, oh my God. Uh, of dying to this thing, even though this is buffing creatures, like 
We have the ship. We want to not die this this particular turn, and otherwise we are kind of in danger. So I'm going to do this now, and then we're going to be able to shield dread treasure cruise next turn, maybe. There's Coco. So the worry was that with Realm Walker in play, if we kill this, leave them with like, uh, they hit like a couple, like a shaman or a shaman and a lord, and we're dead. Oh, uh, they hit nothing. They're just gonna escape. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. All right. Ash number two. Did win out the first one. Versus elves. Um. Seems fine. Let's tell on third seat. Thoughts he's into picklock prankster. I feel pretty good about any hand with these cards. Can trips if we need to find the Hollow land kind of manually. Friend is also mulliganed. We'll lead it off with how I take four. But uh, I'm not gonna write. wait. Oh, this is actual monogreen. Okay, so we take the elf. Ooh. I mean, that's probably wrong, right? My answer was like, oh, we just snapped the elf off, right? But uh, we should probably have taken the Polychronos. We have fatal push for the elf. I mean, this way we are like just get to kind of do our thing here and just prankster, but um, it's maybe a little too fast. We should have thought about that a little bit more. I'm just like, oh yeah, we just take the elf. We don't have a third land, and like, what you want to do most of the time? <laughs> just the mill four cards. Um, I'll go ahead and play this one. Then we milled over a shield as well. Um. But I think how just cast the cantrips here? Get our clock on board. Uh how many draw like the shredder? Yes. Uh actually holding the alt seems free. A rethought seed. Maybe save our earlier decision. Now they're double blue for us. Okay. And they're the forest. Well this is this does serve me pretty right. Um that's so bad to take one of these. Alright. I was gonna do the one eventually. Yeah, this is making me look very stupid. Um which is accurate. <laughs> yes. We'll see. Oh, they did make growth troll. Okay, um, maybe we can work something out then. That makes things a bit not easier, but more like flexible from our side. Okay, we're gonna try it. Sorry, we want to discard the phoenix. Don't do something stupid. Um, and treasure cruise kind of like makes everything work. All right. Okay. Polychronos has reach, which is why I was kind of surprised they didn't just slam it. Polygrowth Troll is on the whole like a better card. Like, it's not a better card. Better for the deck. It, like, keeps Devotion in play. If it dies, like, triumph and stuff. But this is the card that I'm actually afraid of because it's actually hard for us to add, so we didn't have the bit of triumph at the time. Um, so. We'll take four. Do you need to not die? That's, that is important. Everything. Leave the crew. Oh, not having to worry about spell mastery with like fire impulse is also kind of nice. Okay, we have marsh, which is nice. Um, does that look like? Do I want to cast one of these? On? I don't want to cast one of these. On. What was the answer? Okay. How about they want this Phoenix back? What are we what are they doing? They don't actually have anything powerful to do if we do give them the troll mana. And now we have the second bit of triumph. I'm kind of on board with this. We're going to be close to 
Oh, we've got a lethal over the next two turns. Oh, well, over this and next turn. And we have the answer to this, which is the one reach block they can. And this is a Garen bring that on Nick so they can't like make this end this to fight one more things. Alright. So this is interesting. Mono green, but the the way the mono green is trended is more towards aggression. We see all of the chunky three drops, we see Vivian. Um, it means that these disable strokes are not actually very good. Awkward. We want to just go for the throw, but I actually am not convinced about the other things here. Which feels weird. Feels very strange. Um, but I think that's okay. Very much don't want to speed special draw. These like only count Vivian and then maybe depending on how they're constructed either. Like they'll have before drop. You mean bias towards what I actually saw. I'll leave these out, and if it turns out they're not, they're on a, on a, well, they're going higher up on the ramp curve. I'm going to take it out. No. Ah, because their most important cards are three drops. Right? Leave to three. Um. I'm going to trim a slight of hand. He makes the... So, I, I've not played tons and tons of this version of the Phoenix deck. Yeah. These are answers for the creatures. For, for, for the elves, but I think we need to... Gosh. Um, we can mulligan that. We have to mulligan this, right? This isn't doing anything. Mm. We're on the draw. I'm going to 5, let's go to 6. What's this five card hand look like? Here we get to interact with that two drop, hopefully draw into something. We're on the draw. I'm gonna keep this, it doesn't feel great. Absolutely does not feel great. We'll keep this in vents in case we need to cast this, but okay. I think this is better, we've got better chances with this and going to five. It's pretty close though. Uh, I want to make Seamets tapped. We need to get going through our deck. I don't want to play this. Possible. This is at least a little bit slow. One, two, three. Okay, set out. Set out. Really good with the Garen Brig. Really good with. Yeah. Wasting your time. Ops. Uh, we have discard. I just want to tie both through our deck, try and get the stretch cruise and draw into cards. This is like a point where you can make a hedge and think, hey, the invasion for a land would get horribly punished. Or oh, this starts this is two, three, four. So you can activate this for six here. Um, we're gonna. Oh, we can't even disruption. Yep. I'm gonna see the third. Kind of. I live a little. This also unlocks this and then causes a bunch of other problems. Okay. Frank's uh, reasonable. Um, one, two, three, four, six, seven. Right. I'm gonna give the. I'm gonna give the disruption one more turn. We're really, really uh, being optimistic here. So there are a couple of things. Oh, this could come in handy. But oh, this is probably the last turn. If that, and I would not be doing this if we didn't have the prankster. In the case, this couldn't carry. So six, seven, eight. 
We can use the go for the throat. Which I think is fine. That's right. Um, doesn't matter enough here. We need to be practicing here. <laughs> they also, funnily enough, could pay. Is he thought he's using fatal push? Another row is really doing work. Grab the ops. We have an answer for this thing. We'll reach as well. It's a massive problem. Um, Roll 19, actually. I think I got this thought. We have bear triumph. That's really good. I don't want to thought seize us, really, even if this Phoenix is in hand. We can discard this bit of trap as well. One, two, I think we can do all these things, right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's leave with thought seize. Ooh, this is annoying. Let's get this out of here, though. I don't want to mess with that. Don't, don't, don't even think about tapping this with Lee Mana. Alright. So, uh, discard a card. Get the card off out of here. And then let's not give an opportunity to eat with... I mean, to be fair, the scavenging user is not, not problematic. Um, but... The Titan is immediately a massive threat. Alright, one that we're equipped to deal with. No. But yeah, they just like tap out for this, make a 7-7, seven, seven, make a 4-4, four, four, gain a bunch of life, and all of a sudden we just are so out of the out of the loop. They actually I'm surprised they made this for all in a I guess they're not eating. They haven't got tons to eat. I'm off of this thing. Um kinda wanna jam Sheldred, but clearing this out would be Sheldred blocks here. Uh, I think this is the time when we take a turn off. So at the moment there are two creatures to eat with scavenging use. I think this is the path. Mm. It might make stuff about some blocks. Well, with our blocks, but I think we're good. Oh, they can... I don't know if they spot it, but they can maybe make it so we can't block with us. Or at least we'll struggle to block with us. By... Sacrificing the enchantment on the old voice troll. This thing. Um, yeah. At the minute, at least, the scavenging is only going to be a 4 4. I feel happy enough with these in here, but I do think I should brought them out in the last matchup. The, this is one of these like phoenixes from hand situation. Uh, let's go. Let's cost a cast. Yeah, this does not work the way I want it to. Um, I want to pay life for this. Don't thirteen. I'm sick of it not tapping theme events, so I'm gonna myself. I'm gonna main phase prankster here. Get yeah, anything. Yeah, did hit by a triumph. We have this, but it's fine. I wanna save that for then. What's that with this? I'll just leave the children on, on the don't the double block here would be I mean fine, but that's the thing. Yeah, with this in play we need to be casting this anyway. We don't have a, any answers really. Here for our fats, but this one is sealed, I think. Yeah, cool. All right, I'll see you in the post game. All right, a bit of a wrap up here. Yeah, two, two fairly good wins there. 
Um, do you like this version of the Black of Master 3? Like, being three colors also opens you up to a bunch more cyborg cards. We already have, like, a bunch of better interactions in some ways for combo with, like, Sword Seas. We still have access if we want to play more, like, Spell Piss and that kind of thing in the sideboard if we want. Some of the particular choices, I think, like, Bitter Triumph is such a good card and, like, so versatile. And being able to, like, use it to also, like, uh, enable Phoenix is super, super strong. Um, yeah, some of the sideboard choices there, like, I am wasn't, like, super, super sure on. The, um, Shore Dreads, I think, should have come out versus Elves. And I think our sideboard was going green was pretty solid, to be honest. I mean, we cast like slight hand. Forward and then they go, right. We're not, like, super too proud of those matchups. Mono Green's kind of fallen off a little bit. Um, though I think there are good builds. Uh, Elves, I think, is pretty good, but, um, I, I'm not super, I'm not really a fan of, like, growing rights. Or Steel Leaf Champion, to be honest. I have a ton of different alpha days on the channel. I think I should probably do another update at some point soon. But, uh, yeah. I do think it's good. Um, but this list seems super, super great. Like, I really like the, the Black Base Phoenix decks. There's some other options as well. Um, and, yeah, we didn't play anywhere, like... The strokes are, like, realistically for, like, animatic and control. Um, so, like, a little bit more narrow. These are, like, a huge reason to play the deck, especially on Ladder, because I think the Amalia deck is really, really... Um, prevalent, but to be fair, it's one of the best decks in the format. Um, and being like cross hate for angels, but obviously that you hit that matchup is also really nice because this deck can kind of struggle there. And the combination of knights plus shield dread to actually finish them off when you can't attack through their actual angel, like big angels, makes makes a lot of sense. Yeah, the deck's really really solid and uh, performing well. That did just actually take us into top 1200, which I I don't know if I'm about to stick out for the month to get the, the invite token, but um, just because I'm moving. But uh, we'll we'll give it a shot. Then I'll get to top 250. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you got any interest, like if you got any thoughts or anything, or if you're like, hey, I don't like this card, especially. I and mean, some of my decision making in the first game was like a little sloppy, to be honest. But um, I think uh, like as far as the deck goes, super super strong. Would absolutely recommend. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please do like, subscribe, share it around, all that good stuff. And yeah, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Peace out.